today we are going to break down a pair of iconic leather boots. Stay tuned! These are Dr. Martens 101 black leather boots and they surely look vintage and stylish. Take a look! Okay, the time when Dr. Martens were all made in England and had shanks inside the sole is long gone now. Can these boots fit in today's market full of EVA foam or boost mid soles and Gore-Tex upper boots that are capable and lightweight or these sit in their own market? Well, let's find out how Dr. Martens boots are today, but firstly, Let's give this a bit of background. Dr. Martens brand has a way lot of history compared to the brands that make the boots I mentioned earlier and we have to give them credit for being in the market for so long. Their history is well known by now. It all started with the Greeks family that were well known for making footwear in a small town in Northamptonshire in the English Midlands. And that was the year 1901. Because in 1945 enters the stage Klaus Martens, a doctor in the German army during World War II, that because he was recovering Covering from a broken foot, he created the air cushion sole for the very uncomfortable army boots that he was issued with that had a traditional hard leather sole, all of this to aid his recovery from injury. Martens showed his prototype to an old university friend and mechanical engineer, Dr. Herbert Funk. By 1947, the two of them began production of these air cushion sole boots. In 1952, they opened a factory in Munich, Germany, and in 1959, they began advertising internationally, and from the year 19 1960, boots were branded with air wear and with bouncing soles based on Bill Griggs' own handwriting, Bill being the third family generation at the time running the factory in England. In the first few years of Dr. Martin's existence, the boots were being worn by postmen and factory workers, but by 1970 they were picked up by multicultural skinheads and shortly by artists in the music industry. The first famous artist to wear this was Pete Townsend from The Who that wore this on stage. In the 90s, the brand became synonymous with festival culture. In 2019, concerns were raised about the decline of Dr. Martin's shoes since either production was moved to Asia or Permira acquired the brand. This was all happening under CEO Steve Murray, former brand president of Vans. The first and most famous Dr. Martin's boot is the 1460 model that is still in production today in many variations. The 101 model that I have with me today is the shorter version of the 1460s, but they carry the same design and DNA. Enough history. History. Let's start by discussing appearance. This feature an iconic all black upper silhouette with minimal but precise stitching. The famous yellow stitching stands out all around the sole's upper part, matching the air wear and with bouncing sole stack that I have mentioned earlier, doubling as a pull loop in the back. Laces are appropriately all black and together with the dark grey metal eyelets compose the lacing structure that climbs all the way to the top. Mid sole is chunky and tall and a bit translucent, which I find quirky. The outsole features the classic pattern with high protruding studs. The interior is all black featuring no lining with an also black smooth insole. Branding wise we can spot Dr. Martens airwear with bouncing soles printed here on the insole, the airwear with bouncing soles tag in the back, Dr. Martens and airwear again carved into every eyelet which I find a high quality detail and Dr. Martens air cushion sole on the outsole. Now materials wise this feature of course an all natural leather upper dyed in black because these are the unbound version, they feature a lightweight milled leather unfinished at the top and, as I have mentioned before, no interior lining. Basically, this leather was tumbled to make it softer and malleable. This, together with the suede one, are maybe the most comfortable versions of uppers for this. You can also find this model with a smooth leather upper that is shinier and stiffer 
a vegan one and also a suede upper one. And these are the sixth eyed model, meaning that they feature six metal eyelets on each side. We can spot rigid reinforcements in the forefoot area acting as toes cage and in the back as heel support. The one in the back is also stitched to the upper. I am not able to remove the insole, but this one is thin, made from soft foam and finished in a soft synthetic black material on top. The old, heavier but more durable soles are also long gone by now and this feature the Bex chunky sole that has a height of about 3.5 centimeters and it is made from 100% I let you pronounce this one. This synthetic material is soft and malleable and feels like a stiffer silicone. The sole is also air cushion, hence the famous airwear branding. To explain this, basically multiple small empty chambers compose the structure to offer more dampening that working boots usually don't even dream about. The outsole thread is designed to offer traction and make these boots grippy. Padding wise, I can spot none whatsoever. Last but not least, the pull loop that sits in the back is made from a wide synthetic strap that is sewed inside for about 0.6 inches and it is not going anywhere without the boot itself of course let's move on and discuss features first of all what are our expectations with a pair of boots are these protective i'll start with the obvious because these feature an all leather upper your feet will be protected against wind and also water to a certain extent given that the tongue is stitched to the upper all the way up to above the fourth row of eyelets and water won't be able to see through here a small design decision was to sew the tongue under the eyelets line so that any water going through the eyelets holes will not enter the boot nicely done dr martens also the rain Enforcements in the forefoot and hind foot will keep you safe against accidental bangs. Okay, but what about build quality? First of all, the upper leather is high quality, not of the highest out there, but the lack of any plastic coating and its thickness will ensure durability. Looking at the soles and its build, of course, this will not withstand wear like the hard leather soles that the old boots featured, but you also will not be using this like the old boots were used, working in those dreadful factory conditions. Dr. Martin states that this sole is resistant to oil, fat, acid, petrol and alkali that is typically a caustic or corrosive substance such as lime or soda. The sole is also lugged, meaning that it features deep indentations along the top in a pattern designed to provide good, stable and durable footing, this construction usually being used for work boots. Also this is a must for boots, the eyelets have to be metal to avoid any future ripping through the upper in their lifetime. Also important is the fact that this feature a good year weld allowing them to be resold repeatedly. The Goodyear weld is the process in which the sole is attached and welded to a strip of rubber that is further sewed to the upper to avoid in-time sole separation. When discussing build quality, we would also have to take into account that some models of boots are made in England and are higher quality, but not these. These are made in Vietnam. Last, but equally important, are these comfortable? Well, the fact that this particular pair that I'm holding has a milled leather that is malleable together with the bouncy malleable thick sole contributes to a more comfortable pair than other models from the same brand or even other brands. But even with the thin leather and non-rigid sole, these are quite heavy. The lack of any padding doesn't help either, but during colder days you can compensate by wearing thick plushy socks with this. Also Dr. Martin boots are also famous for being notoriously hard to break in, resulting in pain and thriving blisters. I've come across a ton of bad advice online for breaking in these boots, like heating them up with a hairdryer or hitting them with a hammer or even showering with them or swimming in the ocean while wearing them. But please don't do any of this as you're more likely to damage or compromise certain materials and diminish the boots lifespan. My opinion is that you just need to wear them by starting gradually with short walks going all the way to wear them all day long. And for sure, with a lot of patience for some, they will break in and feel comfortable, at least as comfortable as some leather boots can feel. Another important little detail, and this is for you boots heads out there, these don't feature the inner sole shank that they previously did in the past. The boots shank is a piece of supportive steel, wood or plastic, that sits between the midsole and the outsole of boots to provide structural support between the heel and the pad and also help support the load carried by your feet and calves and makes an overall more stable footing of the boot itself. You can really feel the difference between boots that feature a shank and the ones who don't 
shank. After a long day of standing, those not having a shank will feel very uncomfortable compared to the others. Sadly, Dr. Martens dropped the use of the shank in their boots. Also sad is the fact that Dr. Martens does not offer half number sizing and for that big of a company this is at least questionable. Okay, let's draw conclusions. In the grand scheme of boots market, where well-crafted leather boots could set you back 400 US dollars or more, these are surely affordable at around 160 US dollars, even though they likely won't last you a decade like other leather boots brands out there, and the craftsmanship is no longer at the higher level where it used to be for these boots, but in the end, that is basically what you are paying for. Craftsmanship. Also, I have to make it clear that these are not hiking or intense activities boots, but merely street fashion day-to-day -day boots that opposed to technical boots will fit basically any outfit. Now, scrolling to the reviews on Dr. Martin's US website, these have a rating of 4.6 out of a total of 5 stars, with 40 reviews, from which only one review is a 1 star one. In the how do they fit department, we have managed to discover discrepancy in information provided in the upper part of the product page that reports a customer say runs large, but if you scroll down we can discover a customer say true to size. But we wanted to clarify this and we read the customer's reviews and we drew a line. Runs small is reported in two reviews, true to size in 16 reviews and runs large in 10 reviews. So now you know what to do hopefully. I don't. The lack of half number doesn't make this choice easier either, but I would probably be safer going with the true to size boot for this. What do you think about these iconic boots? Would you consider buying a pair now? Please leave your thoughts below. As for me, see you in the next one.